This is it, ladies and gentlemen. The Wildcat is the vehicle you need that is pretty much good against everything. It can dominate in so many situations and just an all-round pretty good vehicle, at least relatively speaking. At first, you may be fooled to think that this is an anti-air tank that's just going to exclusively sit in the back of the map spamming at choppers. But that is not it. Once you start unlocking the various upgrades, you will soon unlock more options and can be extremely devastating to enemies. In fact, the AA cannon is pretty bad. It may be easier to land shots on choppers and planes, but that's about it. Damage isn't particularly good. It is also not great at shooting at infantry unless you are pretty close. It is also terrible against land vehicles. So the sooner you move away from the AA cannons, the better you will do, and the better you will feel. The first unlock for the main gun will be the 40mm cannon. It is a relatively fast firing cannon that can 2-3 hit infantry on direct or close to direct hits. Otherwise, it has a decent splash damage radius so you can potentially hit enemies behind covers. Especially against Irish deployable shield. It does mediocre damage to other land vehicles, but it can somewhat hold its own against main battle tanks if you play smart. It is very good against air vehicles, taking only half a dozen shots or so to take down a chopper. It is definitely slightly harder to land shots against choppers compared to the 30mm anti-air cannon, but it's certainly not difficult. The rate of fire is also fast enough for you to adjust your shots before running out of reserve. Reserve also replenish at a decent rate, giving you a pretty good uptime. All in all, it is a very solid choice that has a slight emphasis towards infantry farming with good anti-air capability and a workable anti-tank role. Some may even claim this is the meta loadout for this vehicle. But the next unlock, which is the 57mm cannon, it is in my opinion a potentially even better choice. It works similarly to the 40mm cannon, but with a smaller blast radius and higher damage. It requires a little more finesse when farming infantry players, but if you can land your shots, oh boy you're going to love this thing. The first time I tried it for like half a round, I thought it wasn't for me and swapped back to the 40mm. But eventually gave another try only to discover that you can land direct hits on enemies without shield, you can most likely one shot them. This is huge. Unlike the 40mm that you would kind of spam and not necessarily try to be super accurate and may rely on splash hammer to do the job. With the 57mm you need to be accurate but if you are, you're going to be rewarded. The 12 shots that you have in reserve can potentially let you kill a dozen infantry players, whereas the 40mm will most likely not give you that. It has a lot more burst damage output with a slower rate of replenishment, but its benefit doesn't stop there. Its damage to land vehicles is amazing. I mean it's absolute gold. I may even argue that it is better than the impact shells from main battle tanks. This is especially true against transport vehicles where you can just absolutely wreck with ease because of such a high damage per shot relative to its rate of fire. You can also kill a main battle tank head on with just around 9 shots, or in the rear, 6 shots. Before the tank can even realize what's going on and turn the turret, you would have ended them. It is just an amazing weapon. Against air vehicles, it is also super amazing if you can land the shots. The difficulty is definitely one step harder than the 40mm given its slower rate of fire. It takes around 3 shots to kill an attack chopper and around half a dozen against the super hind or the condor. But if you have difficulty landing your shots, the 40mm may be a better choice. But of course this is not the only downside. Another problem with this particular cannon, whether it's intentional or not, does not seem to shoot at where you're aiming at, even with the first shot. Many times you will see the blue mechanics affect the first round, so sniping at infantry from a further distance may sometimes be frustrating if it somehow veers off to the side. The rearming speed of the reserve ammo is also relatively slow, giving you a bit more downtime in between bursts. I do think this speed is quite balanced at this time or else it would become quite overpowered. And now apart from the main cannon, there are two lock-on weapons you can choose from. One is the anti-air missile, the other is the anti-tank which you can lock onto pretty much any land vehicles. I have tried both quite a bit, 
but have decided that I would stick to the anti-air missiles. And first, the anti-air missiles are somewhat fucked at the moment, where it may reacquire targets on its own even after the enemy pilot's flares ran out of effect. And in the background footage, you can see how that shouldn't be happening. And let's hope DICE get the fix on that ASAP. But even without this bug, the AA is very good at harassing air vehicles, especially when the enemies often come at you with 4-5 to five choppers at a time. Just locking onto them is going to help keep them away from your team, and if you can shoot after they flare, then even better. And because you are probably using the 40mm or the 57mm cannon, your mid to long range AA capability is certainly lowered by a bit, unless you are just a legendary aimer. These AA missiles are going to come in handy. And the other choice would be the anti-tank missile. While it can be useful at times, I find it more annoying to use because land vehicles can get to cover a lot quicker, and terrain often blocks your missiles. It also somehow takes forever to lock onto vehicles, and in fact you can probably kill your target with your main cannon faster than trying to lock onto them in the first place. So for that reason, this is definitely not my go-to choice. And the rest of the options are pretty easy to choose from. I go with the thermal smoke for my countermeasure because I believe it does affect lock-ons. Because you are definitely going to need it with like half the enemy team using Sundance and throwing those tracking grenades at you every 30 seconds across the map. And for the weapon station, I like the heavy machine gun or the grenade launcher because they are relatively easy to use and anybody who decides to hop on can do a decent job. As for the weapon pod, the kinetic grenade is also quite powerful, especially trying to clear out duckout positions. The mortar may be another viable option, but does take considerably more skills. Now, of course this vehicle has got some downsides that you probably can't do anything about. First, its repair system pretty much only fixes the damaged parts and gives a tiny tiny bit of health back, unlike the main battle tank that gives us substantially more health. Again, I'm not sure if this is intended because it seems arbitrary. If anyone knows more about this system, please let me know down in the comment section. So spawning in with a repair tool is going to be quite important. Of course, you will want to be very smart about getting out and repairing, while it is not as punishing as in Battlefield 5, where the enter and exit animation takes forever, there is still a short enter animation that you gotta go through. I have seen someone got out in the middle of a fight and had their tank stolen in front of me. Just common sense, people. The other would be its engine. Trying to go uphill is a major pain. Its top speed is probably faster than the main battle tank by a bit, but it's just absolutely horrible if you're trying to go up any sort of incline. Going up the last sector of Manifest is probably one of the worst driving experiences. And at this rate, it appears that the World War I tech in older battlefields seem to work better than 2042 tech. And overall handling on flat land is also quite lackluster and is considerably worse than the IFVs back in Battlefield 3s. There are also a lot of missing features and weapons or loadout customizations compared to previous titles like in Battlefield 3 and 4, but that is not the focus of this video. Otherwise, that is it for my quick review of this vehicle. Give it a go if you haven't. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Have an amazing day, everyone. And beware of tornadoes. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Ah! Got stuck into a tornado, you gotta be kidding me. No!